Seahawks, 4-1, and one, take on the Browns in Cleveland. The Browns are 2-3 and three and trying to figure things out right now. Russell Wilson has been arguably in my, I mean, through five weeks, there's been no more impressive quarterback on film to me than Russell Wilson. Completing 73% of his passes, hyper-efficient because he's great. And Baker Mayfield's been the most disappointing quarterback yes, through five he, weeks. he has. So this is going to be a difficult situation. The Seahawks are one-and-a-half-point road favorites. It's a 46-and-a-half-point over-under. And the this Browns defense is not holding up. What do you do with the Brown side of the ball? Let's start there. You know Nick Chubb is in to yep. your, in your lineup yes. each and every week, averaging 21.8 touches per, per game. Beckham, he's got a 53.5% catch rate. That's the lowest of his career. Yeah, Last I'm, year, Landry had a 54% catch rate. What are you smirking about over there, Jason? I'm smirking about the fact that you have to start Odell Beckham. Oh, uh, yes. You certainly do. But you don't really want – I mean, it hasn't worked out except for one broken long touchdown run, which obviously is completely in his arsenal, which is why you have to start him. But, Andy, why don't you bring up – your? you said you wanted to bring up your trade. Sure. Yeah, yesterday – I traded. I made the decision. Now, we play in a two-flex league. A lot of our trade advice over the years has been, you know, a lot of people play in a one-flex league. And in those leagues, it's almost, I almost always advise, look, get the best player in the deal, the perceived best player in the deal. Two-for-one deals. You end up with the one. You get to sign somebody. You're filling out a smaller roster. But we moved to a two-flex format in our league of records, so we have a little bit more. We got more positions to fill with consistency. 12-man league, two-flex. I made the call yesterday. I'm getting out of the OBJ business in that league. I've had him for a year and a half. It's a three-keeper league. He destroyed me last year with injuries. Didn't help my team. This year, I'm waiting for the chemistry to happen. I don't believe you can fix an offensive line overnight, which means that how is that chemistry going to happen when Baker Mayfield's on his back half the time? So I traded Odell Beckham Jr., and I traded him for, for Robert Woods and Michael Gallup. Mm -hmm. And... I really go, haven't done a deal like that before. A lot of people out there might be gasping. <gasps> you know, two de good, decent wide receivers for a superstar, but I, I like it on your side, especially considering your team needs. I think Robert Woods is an extremely good buy-low guy right now. He's got zero touchdowns on the year, but he's still on pace for 1,300 receiving yards. And and Michael Gallup. Say, I mean, my, Michael Gallup is the buy-low. To Both me. of these guys. Like, he has not established any sort of foundation. See how many targets he had last week? Yes, he's he, fourteen. Yes, he's his target share is incredible. His his air yards are incredible. When he's played, he unfortunately had that span of games he missed because of the injury. But he is exploding. I, I put a rest of season poll up yesterday because we need validation as fantasy owners <laughs> that we did the right thing, and we can and. 77% of the Foot Clan agreed with the they prefer Woods and Gallup over the back half of the season than OBJ. The fact of the matter is there are very few players as talented as Odell Beckham Jr. in football. And clearly last week they were making special efforts to get him uniquely involved in the offense. All that being said... And special teams. And special mm -hmm. teams. All that being said, Odell Beckham Jr. will always have the potential to win you the week and be the number one fantasy wide receiver. But I don't think consistency is going to be something you can count on if this offense stays in the bottom third of football. That's my concern with it. So, you know, in three games played, Michael Gallup's the wide receiver seven in points per game. I think he is a buy low because his name hasn't been established. But on film, I've liked everything I saw from preseason. You guys know that. So it was it was time to, to move out of the Odell Beckham waiting game. Yep. You still have to play him because he's Odell Beckham. Yeah, and, and the Browns' schedule opens up the second half of the year. I think the next two weeks are hard. they got the Seahawks. I want to say the Patriots, or the Patriots are in two weeks, something like that. After that, they've got a pretty uh, easy schedule, so hopefully things do turn around for the Browns. Through five weeks, Landry is the wide receiver 32. Odell Beckham is the wide receiver 35. And the offense has to get rolling. That's all that has to happen. All these players, the chips will fall the right direction. Ricky Seals-Jones is a desperation tight end play. He is receiving targets. He almost had a great catch in this last game, but it's desperation mode. On the other side, you got to start Will Disley at this point. He's, oh, yeah. He's, oh, he's big Montana. Yes. He's an absolute beast. <laughs> well, we're saving that. We're okay. saving that Thank for later. Thank goodness. Thank for goodness. later. 
Ty- oh, no. <laughs> Tyler Lockett is the wide receiver 10 on the year. He's out there. Chris Carson, you're starting. What do you do with DK Metcalf? Is he a flex play for you this week against Cleveland? This is a – He's in flex consideration. The Browns defense, I mean, they're – they're fifth, They're ranked fifth against fantasy wide receivers, so it's on paper is not a great matchup. But as has been very evident this year, Russell Wilson is not to be taken on paper. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Oh, hey. I was just looking at this really cool award we got. You see this? Mm, it's, it's pretty nice. Award. You can have your own if you click subscribe. <laughs>